We are live, I think. Let me know how the audio sounds from what I tested. Were you back to using the Blue Yeti microphone? I am not, I, I just wasn't even willing to mess with the wireless today. The USB one was working, which it wasn't doing Friday, so I took it as a win. Let me know how that is sounding. It kind of scares me. Um, audio video check from Nick, yay! I'm kind of amazed that it's working today. Um, it, let me know, is it loud enough or if I need to make any adjustments? This has been the weirdest thing. If you were here on Friday or if you missed it, I'll just tell you what happened. The short version of this story was it wouldn't, the audio is just, actually, let me back it up. The short version has to be a teeny bit longer. I started having problems with my wireless mic a couple of weeks ago and it wasn't the mic. It was something with the computer. So I got another adapter to let that, you know, to see if that would fix it. Didn't fix it. But then... My norm, my backup mic started, and it, again, not the mic, it's something to do with my laptop. The audio was just fuzzy and clicking, and I mean, all kinds of weird stuff. So we had to make some adjustments to Friday's video. We just did a hangout in my office since that computer seemed to be working fine. So now I was able to get my, um, this mic, the Blue Yeti, hooked up and I was like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and figure this out. We did a factory reset over the weekend. It didn't help anything. Nothing was making, like we couldn't find answers to this. And luckily my husband, who's a tech nerd, he was able to come in and I say that like it's a negative thing. That's actually, is a very cool thing. But anyway, he came in and messed with it and then he started swearing because I was trying to explain to him what happened and he's like, that doesn't make sense, you're an idiot. I mean, he didn't say that, of course, but I know that's what he was thinking because the, the symptoms didn't make sense. It's like, these are too many different symptoms that doesn't, like, no. So he came in and found out that's exactly what it had been, like, that was the case. And yay, there was just, I just felt a little better that it wasn't just me that this was an issue for. So anyway, we got another adapter to try. It's a like an audio capture device thing. So that may work for the, the, the wireless, but I didn't test it last night because I was running late anyways. And I, oh, and there's an error. Why do I have an error? Um, error, please use key frame soon. I don't even know what that is. That's probably no big deal. Um, I have no clue. Of course, there's another issue. So anyway, um, yeah, that was... That was the drama there and I haven't tried the wireless because when this one worked yet last night, I was like, that's it, I'm just I I'm sold. We will go with that today. So that is, is what kind of the, the slow or the, the version of what my drama has been. So um, yes, this Donna, this is on YouTube and on Facebook right now. YouTube, I like better than Facebook. But that, that's, um, yeah. So tonight we are going to be, look, you can see my hand looks all weird colored. In order to get the color right on this, I have to like weirdly saturate it and change the, the blue, uh, the white, white, whatever, white balance. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's a weird color. Oh, did I check to make sure this, yeah, it looks like it's in focus. Let me double check one more thing. Cause as I was fussing with audio, I might have missed Something that needs to be turned off on this. Nope, it looks like we are okay. Okay, so, looks like we're all good. So, let's go ahead and get started on this, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is just start with some of the shading, then I'll come back through with the highlighting. So, I'm going to just do, use black. We're keeping this pretty simple. Um, what brushes do I want? You guys will do. So I'm just gonna mix some water in with my black paint. And this is Mars black. So it's gonna be more opaque than like an ivory black that would be very translucent. My flamingo slippers, there you go. You'll see them on tomorrow's video. Um, they are getting caught on all my wires. This is a challenge. So I'm just going to apply the paint with one brush. That brush needs a little bit of water. Take a clean brush that is a little, ooh, too much water. A little bit of water and we're going to pull that out. And I'm just gonna go move around and create these little shadows all over the place. And I don't know why this pop-up error keeps happening on YouTube. YouTube, please. I've just, it has been the weirdest, like the tech issues that I've had over the last few days, like my computer. So we reset the laptop and the, um, you said it kept freezing. Let's see, Facebook keeps freezing. See you on YouTube. That doesn't surprise me. I'm not even sure it's not happening on YouTube. Um, but the tech issues, like it wouldn't let me sign in to my account even though it was the right password, I had it written down. Like we had to try so many, even my husband was trying, he's like, this doesn't make sense either. I have had the weirdest tech issues 
over the last like maybe a couple of weeks. It's just been one thing after another. It's been so odd. Like, why? Why do you all hate me? Um, what was the other one? Like really odd stuff where I'm like, that, why would that even be a thing? Today, and this one was just a stupid thing. I charged so that I could use my wireless mic for today's video and I charged them and one of the devices did not charge. And so I go to record and that's completely dead and it charged overnight, so it should have been fine. Well, I later realized it wasn't plugged in. So, I mean, some of this tech stuff has been my own, that was just my own stupid fault. Turns out it doesn't matter if you plug one end in, if it's not plugged into the wall, nothing charges. Who would have known? I mean, you think that's common sense, but I'm also the same person who half the time, well, more than half the time, like every time I turn on my digital camera, I forget to, I'm just erasing a little in the middle where I went a little too dark. So I've got a little bit more water here, but I always leave my, my lens cap on. And then I'm like, why can't I see anything? What's wrong with my, my, my camera? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Whoops. Hold on. I've got a few things popping up. Yes, please, if you can like this video, share this video, comment on this video, anything like any interaction, I would love you forever. It helps. There we go. Uh, let's see, D said my laptop didn't update last week and then died completely, maybe coincidence. I don't know, I, like I know, there was something to do, like th these problems really did start with the update. So I will say, I do think that it was something with the, I think it was the audio device or the audio management thing. It's like, N what is it? N-A-H-I-M-I-C. I don't know how to say that. It's the audio thing that MSI uses. And I thought it was just a Windows thing. It's actually an MSI thing. And I think, th I suspect strongly that that is causing the problems because when I messed with that, I was able to kind of fix it, which is weird because I've never touched that. Like I, I don't, even pay attention to it. It's just been left at whatever the default was. So I think when it updated, something went horribly wrong. Um, it's just, yeah. Uh, let's see. Sneak said, you have fibromyalgia. I do. My, I sound so happy about it, don't I? I do. Um, my, <coughs> my sister-in-law and several others say that computers and tech equipment tend to have more unusual issues than normal people's. You know what it is? It's called fibro fog. So our brains just don't quite work. Like we don't, they're not, all, all our cylinders aren't firing. Wait, is that how that saying goes? I don't know. Um, we're, we get what they call fibro fog, where our brain is just like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna work today. So that's probably why. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Facebook user. Uh, use, user error may, user error any may be factor with the lens cap. Um, for Facebook users, there's a, I don't know if it showed up. I don't know if you're going to see, um, hold on. Let me see if it'll go through. If you click that link, if it shows up for you, I don't think it's showing up for you guys. It's showing internal error. It's chat.restream.io slash Facebook. If someone wants to write that out in the Facebook chat, that link will, um, allow you to, to enable this app that will let you chat in the Facebook live stream where I can actually see what the name is. Like if I went, if I log into Facebook, I can see what the name is, but while I'm chat, like live streaming, I can't see it. Unfortunately, but that will give the app permission to tell me who you are. I mean, that's the app that I use to live stream to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time. And hopefully me, we will catch up and have some live streaming there. Um, let's see, pain can cause the fog. Yeah, it can. But even like when I don't deal with the, the pain as much, mostly I have the pain under control because of my diet. So I don't really have the pain much, but I still have the fibro fog. Like that's just an always thing for me. The fibro fog and the fatigue, I've never figured a way to solve. And actually it's going to be worse because today I, I'll tell you this story too. I'll tell you part of tomorrow's story. So today I skip my nap because the big, um, the big wardrobe thing I ordered for the studio to take over the shelves that I hated, that came today and I decided that would make for a fun video tomorrow, but if I wanted it to be tomorrow's video, I needed to actually build the thing. It's big and I'm not even done. Like I got the outside part done, now I need to build the drawers and then I have to organize. So tonight's plan after the live stream is to go back to filming that. There will be wine involved because I have to try to stay up late and wine gives like, I'm one of the weird people where wine or alcohol gives me energy. 
So then I'll actually work out good for me. Plus it makes it, you know, organizing more fun. So I'm having a wine and finish building things and organize the studio night. And then I'm recording that so that I can put it on tomorrow's video. So I will be able to share with you the studio. That was one of the last like major things I wanted for the studio. I still need to do some stuff with lighting, but besides that, I'm pretty excited. Uh, let's see. Sneaks and having a memory like Swiss cheese. Oh my gosh, so true there. What is fibromyalgia? Um, depends on who you ask. Symptoms are pain and like random pain. Like randomly, I will like if I've been eating like crap, I will feel like somebody is stabbing me. It's almost like I, I think that's where the idea of voodoo dolls and pincushion type doll things came from. Because you feel like somebody is stabbing you in the side or wherever, like random location, just like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And then it'll pass. But just aching, pain, like I don't like to shake people's hands. Like if they squeeze too hard, it hurts my hand. So stuff like that, like simple things can be bad. But for me, I would say the worst because I've gotten to where I can control the pain with my diet. For me, the worst is the fatigue. I am so tired all the time. It's very hard to function. And if I don't take a nap like I didn't today, I'm the, the fibro fog, the, the, my mushy brain is going to be worse than usual. I'm not going to remember words. I'm going to like just functioning in general is, is quite a challenge. But I would say the biggest thing for me with fibro is um, because the pain, the pain is the biggest thing for most people. But again, I figured out a way with my diet to, to keep that under control. So it's mostly just the the brain fog and fatigue and the brain fog doesn't even bother me that much it's just it's something to laugh about when like my brain is just like yeah and i stopped working it happens um let's see Tara said my 13 year old keeps saying you're my twin <laughs> i rebel technology normally i don't normally it's fine i don't know what in the world like I'm good with tech most of the time. My husband is usually better, but I mean, we're not a on the tech savvy family here. And so it's been weird and frustrating, like just, oh my gosh, I'm going to snap because I'm not used to not like this level of things not working for me. It's been very, it's been frustrating. I've not been a fan. Man, I'm excited to get the studio. Like I'm looking around at all the crap that is just, we're not in a good place. I'm so looking forward to getting this cleaned up. Um, hold on, it looks like, oh, welcome new patron, Lisa Durden, if you're watching. Lisa, Lisa, what, you're, I like that better than Lisa. That is, I like how you spell it either way. Welcome. Okay. So yeah, after I get the, everything organized in here, the shelf that I currently like that this our, our wardrobe is replacing, that's going in my canvas closet, canvas organizing closet. I'm going to put all my paper in here and then keep all the canvases in the other one because I'm getting, things are getting damaged just from being shoved in there. And I promise, I don't know if you guys remember of the teal um, flamingo that somebody painted for me. It's beautiful. And I wanted to post and show you guys it's in that closet. And I can't even get to it. I can't get to a bunch of original artwork I have in there that's just waiting to be framed and hung. I can't even get to it right now. Oh, that's so going in my bedroom now that I think about it because I just made everything even more teal in there. But I can't, I can't even get to it. So this will fix that. So that's getting organized. That'll be the following week. I'll share the um, the canvas closet. Uh, let's see. Harold, it did work. I can see your name. You are no longer a Facebook user. <laughs> Uh, let's see, D Lynn Creative Arts said, oh my word, maybe because it's snowing outside, but I keep having tech issues. Either that or the zombie snail has attacked my system. I'm gonna blame the zombie snail. Uh, sneaks, oh no, that's not me. Ted's Art Pick said, I painted my first painting in acrylic yesterday. However, it looks like something I painted with my feet. Any suggestions? No, but that's normal. Like, I think the biggest suggestion is don't be frustrated. This is a part of the process. A lot of people get to that stage and give up and then they always, like they never move beyond that. So this is good. You're one step closer to your work, not looking like you painted it with your feet. So congratulations, you, you're working the right direction. So just keep painting. That's going to be the biggest thing. Your experience, make a mess, paint something ugly, and then paint some more. And over time, it's going to get less and less ugly. I think one thing that's helpful too is to be aware. At this stage, I wouldn't worry too much about the whole be aware of, of your, where your mistakes are. But as you progress, did I just wipe black paint on my nose? As you progress, 
you're going to start want to start paying attention to like what went wrong what didn't like why doesn't it look how i want it to and figuring that out but right now your first painting you just throw some paint on that canvas and blend it or try to paint whatever it is you're trying to paint and it is what it is i mean you have to get a feel for the paint initially and that's what you're doing right now so my biggest tip is don't beat yourself up over it if it didn't look like you're, you painted it with your feet, I might have some questions like it should. It's normal to look like you painted it with your feet for your first painting, so you're good. Keep painting. It's good. And it, if you've been doing art, which I know you have, you work in other mediums, then it shouldn't take you too long to get the hang of the acrylic. So it's not going to, like, let's say you've been a colored pencil artist for five years and you're fairly competent with colored pencils. When you switch over to acrylics or whatever other medium, it's not going to take you another five years to reach that level of competency. It's going to happen a lot quicker because you already understand you know, your values, getting your contrast, getting accurate drawings, that stuff it, you already know. So you're, you're going to be able to apply that very quickly. Uh, it just doesn't take as long to learn additional mediums. It's kind of the opposite, I think, of language. Like English, no problem learning. When I've made other attempts to learn other languages, not freaking happening. My brain's like, nope, you don't even know how to speak English right. You don't get to try something else. I tried Spanish. I did fail. Actually, I think I got like a D, close enough to failing. I got a D and C's were my, my average for Spanish. It didn't go well. Um, under the fingernail stabbing pains. Oh, I didn't get that one. Mine were usually in my sides or in my legs were more often or like up in my, like around my rib cage, my rib cage. Oh God, now that I think about it, that was one of the worst. Almost like I was being stabbed in between my ribs. That was bad, but those were where I typically got it. Um, yes, Sneak said we need, to, we need to all paint more to forget the health issues for a while. That is really, I mean, for me, that's been a big part of, like even when I was really sick before I, I, I figured out kind of how to control a lot of it with diet, when I was really bad, painting was like my, you know, that and Warcraft, I think just saved my mental health. Having something that made me feel like here's something I can accomplish. I don't have to go outside. I don't have to be active to accomplish it. And then playing World of Warcraft at the time, I used to raid, like be heavily into raiding and stuff. And that was good for me back then. I don't have time now, but back then it was really good because it gave me this sense of a social life. I mean, I had my friends I played with, so I, I didn't feel like I was it took me away from just being trapped in one room where I was either painting or sleeping. That was it. And so it, it really was painting and Warcraft. They saved my, they saved my sanity. I mean, if, if you want to call me sane, most people do not. Jason said, okay, here's Jason. I, I, I don't even have to read it. And I know I'm going to misread it because I always do this to him. Uh, so your name remembering is the say as usual. I think you typed it wrong that time. I don't think that one was me. Your name, I'm get, thinking that's supposed to be your name remembering is the same as usual. In which case, yes. Um, D said, so, okay. D said, it seems like many chronic health issues have brain fog. I have five daughters. Yeah, it does. With P-O-T-S-D, I can't say that. And three of them have fibro. Oh my gosh. Uh, Christine said, it's great that you're back in your studio. Thank you for going ahead with your live stream last week from your office. I'm learning so much from hanging out with you. Yay. Thank you for teaching. Oh, I'm glad you made it. Lottie said, what time do you stop drawing for the night and go to sleep? It depends. I normally try to finish around midnight. Um, that's my normal goal. Sometimes I go till like one in the morning, but it, it really, it depends on how much I need to get done. Like when, um, it depends on the night. So like earlier in the week, like Thursdays and Fridays, I'll usually call it a night earlier and then as I get closer to my deadline and I need to get this patreon lesson done um like I have to edit the voiceover tomorrow and the artwork isn't done then I'll start staying up later trying to get stuff done uh, Clark Fine Arts said I also get weird random nerves and my hands will toss or let go of what they are holding mine's holding a paintbrush or makes holding a paintbrush some uh fun sometimes fiber struggles yes or a glass and a hat suddenly your hand is like nope I'm done with this, like out of nowhere, it just lets go. Like why, why, why did you do that? Like it didn't feel tired, it didn't feel pain. It just was like, I'm not holding this anymore. I haven't had that happen in a long time. Um, Dealing Creative Art said, I found that iron pills help with my fibro and fatigue. Maybe check your iron levels. I might do, I think when I had all my surgeries like three years ago, I think they've checked all of that and it was all fine. Actually, I know when I went, when they, when they die, I keep saying actually, 
that needs to be removed from my vocabulary for the night. When they did all of the testing, when I was diagnosed with fibro, they, I know that they did a ton of blood work. I mean, they tested for like everything and my iron was fine then. So it wasn't the cause in my case, but I mean, that doesn't mean I couldn't need more or use it now, but I know back then it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the cause. Thanks, Lynn. Um, and Chicky Lynn said, I also, also save your old canvas. I repaint a lot of my canvases over and over again. You know, I don't do that because I like to save the paintings so I can see the improvement. I just love the old stuff. I used to, I have repainted stuff. I used to do that more when I couldn't afford to buy new canvases. So I do get where that would be a definite, you know, good thing to have the, the canvases to repaint. But I stopped years ago. I got to where I just started keeping them because it's just, it's fun to see the old stuff. I mean, yeah, okay, you've got photos. You don't really need the original painting, but I usually will just keep everything. Also, I've got a wee bit of a hoarding thing going on. I mean, I struggle with being, wanting everything, like I want my house to look like a model home. Like I struggle with wanting everything all perfect and clean all the time. And also I kind of am a hoarder. It is a weird balance. Uh, let's see. Facebook user said, I know four cuss words in Spanish. <laughs> Are we scrolling? Oh, wow, Lynn said, I quit drug addiction playing WoW and art has forever saved me from the crippling effects of the depression. That is awesome, yay, good for you. Uh, Priscilla said, I want to do the, I went to the doctor for breathing problems. Doctor ran some tests, found out I had Rocky Mountain spotted fever when I was younger, but would deal with all kinds of symptoms for the rest of my life. Oh, that's crazy. Um, Sarah said, my native language is quite similar to Spanish, but I can't learn it because it makes me confused. Too similar, learning English was easier. Oh, that's interesting. Um, scrolling, just going to get caught up on some of these questions. Clark Banner said, holding cups can be dangerous. Yep. It's, see, I stick with my plastic ones. They're way easier. Mm. Except when I have warm coffee, which I did earlier. I've had so much coffee today trying to stay awake. I do have a, how pretty, here, wait, I have to show off this cup. I'm just drooling. Um, that cup is so, it's teal and it has birds and it's in black and white and it's so pretty. Why am I, like, I just spit at myself. That was classy. Uh, let's see. But normally, yeah, the plastic cups are my go-to. I haven't dropped them in a long time, so that's good. Um, I'm just scrolling, looking for my name. If I missed anything, I'm sorry. Just trying to make sure I keep up with, okay. I think we're good. I think I'm caught up. Back to work. Also, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. So inevitably when I don't, I will have somebody who is not familiar with my live streams leaving nasty comments like my world needs to revolve around their world. Wait, did I get that right? I don't know. I'm bad at these phrases. So these videos are art chats, art, you know, artist hangouts. It's a chance for me to get to talk to you guys, answer questions. I don't answer emails. If you've emailed me, you know, I just don't, I want to. There is no time. Either I get my work done or I answer emails. You pick one. Um, so yeah, that is, um, this is where I get to hang out with everybody and we chat a lot. If you're looking for just a straight up art tutorial, I do have those. Patreon.com slash Luckery or Subscribestar.com slash Luckery. It's as little as $4 a month. You get access to all of my longer tutorials. I have over 200 available right now for you to watch. As soon as you sign up, you get instant access to all of those. If you want to check out my Patreon library, that is over on my website. I should have a link, hopefully, in the video description. Luckery.com slash, I think it's Patreon-videos. It's a stupid URL. I'll just go to Luckery.com and scroll down to where it says um, video library. But you can see all of the videos there. There's a free two-hour long demonstration in colored pencil if you want to get an idea of what Patreon is like. See if that's a fit for you. But if you are not looking for these rambling videos, this is my, this is a, an artist hangout and a chat and I just happen to be painting at the same time that we're hanging out. So if you're looking for lessons, that is going to be a better fit. Unfortunately, whoever is going to complain will have not probably gotten this far into the video. Inevitably, like seriously, every time I forget to announce that, I get somebody. I want to call them Karen, but I decided I'm going to stop calling people's people Karens because every single Karen I have ever known in my life was like the sweetest, nicest, non-Karen. Like it's so my brain is just having a hard time. Like I know that the pop culture reference type thing is is Karens. I don't know. I think I'm just going to call them. Can I speak to your managers? Um, not 
Karens just doesn't make sense. Like I've never known a bad Karen and I've known a lot of Karens. I've known a lot of bad other names, but not Karen. So I've decided it is no longer Karens. They are just the, I, can I speak to your managers? They will leave complaining comments because I forgot to make that announcement, letting people know because they can't read the title that says artist hangout. That's where the confusion usually comes in, the lack of reading, whatever. Um, let's see. Susan said, if you have problems with being a hoarder, perhaps consider you may be a dragon. Yes, I'm seriously silly. I like that though. Well, I go from thinking that I'm really a fae to a dragon, now a dragon. That makes sense. It's funny. You guys saw the little bat that I got from um, Sue Rumba. I should, he was in yesterday's video if you missed it, but he's so freaking cute. I already am planning on my second one. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to start hoarding bats now whatever he's i'm calling him a work expense because he is being used in my videos but i want one with bees and she's had one with bees and i also want the water she has another one she did with watermelon like it was a watermelon one and i'm like i just i need some more bats so i am going to be the crazy bat hoarder also plants i hoard plants i definitely hoard okay so it is freezing this is not a change of sub subject, believe it or not. It is absolutely freezing. Like we're gonna get down to five degrees in a few days here. It is cr not usual for this area. I am not happy. The worst part is my plant hoarding tendencies. Like you can't, you can't order plants online right now. They will freeze even with heat packs. Like it's just too cold. And that is the hardest part about this cold to me besides the fact that I do have some plants outside that are not gonna make it through this cold. I have some star jasmine that aren't gonna make it through it. That's okay. They were looking a little frumpy. I'll just replace them but yeah i am like that is the hardest thing for me right now with this cold is i can't buy plants right now i have to wait and i don't want to wait i like buying plants because i'm a freaking plant hoarder mostly i've been buying plants for my vivarium so at least they're going into like a, an enclosed space so they're not just completely spreading sort of some of them most of them so yeah that is really like i don't know what you guys are challenged with right now from the cold but that is one of my mine i apparently am going to need some like meetings to control myself because i've got a problem like when i realized how much it bugs me that i can't go plant shop or you know i can't like normally I, josh's frogs is where i get a lot of mine and i i just like like if i have a free moment i like browsing their website i'm like i can't even order anything i can't it's too cold i can't order oh so sad um let's see oh, i'm scrolling up Uh, let's see, Eo said, besides my husband, you are the funniest person in Eo. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's actually a compliment to me because funny, like I like funny people. So like that's who I want to surround myself are. I, I enjoy it. D Lynn Creative Arts said, the former Karens are people who have abused the suggestion box. Uh, Tara said, I followed your advice and got some polychromos. They came in this morning. I love them so far. Spent the day at them instead of homeschooling. I mean, it was an art day. Just call it an art day. Well, I don't know. Did you let the kids touch them though? Because if you, you go get them some Crayola and then while you're working, you can say that is part of homeschooling. Also, seriously, can I stop spitting on myself? This is like, I'm a classy lady. What the heck is this? Um, let's see. Joseph said, my aunt is Karen. I have chosen to refer to them as Car Car Quarin from now on. <laughs> yeah, Lynn said, that's cold for down there. Yeah, it is. You know what's funny about it being this cold down here too? A lot of people started thinking that the, um, like your zones, if you garden, your zones have changed, that this area got to where it was like it used to be colder and now it's gotten warmer and so a lot of people started planting things like palm trees and they're regretting it now because most of those are going to die like there have been palm trees forever you know people have had them up for a while and they they've done fine for you know the last 10 12 years we just have not had where it was this cold gosh it's probably been 10 or 12 years that i can remember so um a lot of trees are not go like it's kind of sad so l luckily, the only thing that I think I'm going to have problems with my, my lily turfs are liriope, li I can't say it, turf lilies, lily turfs, I get that backwards all the time. Some of those are going to have to be cut back, which is not a big deal because we're right before spring, they'll grow back. 
Um, I can just cut the leaves back that, that freeze too much. And I am certain that the star jasmine, but like I said, it was already looking frumpy. It just wasn't doing well the way I had it potted because I did pot, keep it in pots. So I'm going to let, I'll just replace that. But everything else, a bunch of stuff from my front yard, I have in these big terracotta bowls. So I had some perennials in there that I was thinking, wow, it was a really warm winter. I think these perennials, or no, they weren't even perennials. They were annuals. So they should have died. The, I'm like, I think that I am going going to get another year out of them. And then this happened. So I dragged them all. I removed them all. My, my garage really does look like an episode of Hoarders. There are plants everywhere in my garage right now. I also, last week, because I didn't think this freeze cold was going to last that long, I'm planting the new um, flower bed that's going to go, and I'll, I will record that, but I'm planting the new flower bed that's going to go around my, my, uh, studio window. It's a bay window. And I like started putting the border in and then the plant that I was going to plant, I decided I'm just going to plant them where they've been in the pots. We're just going to remove them from the pots, put them in the ground. And then I, because once I realized what that would be over here, like how far out I would have to have the border so the plants, those shrubs get too big and I don't want them up against the house. So anyway, moral of that story, I decided I wanted something different. So I went and bought, I think, how many, what do I have? I've got 11 Mexican feather grass, 15 lily turfs, variegated lily turfs, or turf lilies, I always get that backwards, and 18 mondo grasses, and they're all gonna, like, I, it's gonna be so pretty, and it's gonna tie in the rest of the yard, because I have lily turfs in other areas, and then I've got feather grass over here, and that, it's the same kind, and so, like, it's gonna tie everything in, I'm so excited, and they're all in the garage right now, because it is too dang cold, so yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of this cold, because it's keeping me out of my yard, and I'm also really whiny in the cold, so it's not like I'm just gonna put up with it and do any work, yeah, Oh, uh, let's see. Lottie said she made an octopus one too, so maybe you could buy one. So the bat has a buddy. I saw it. Did you went to her Etsy page, huh? Because I saw that there and thought about contacting her about that. I think though, I'm gonna maybe. I I'm considering it, but the bat. I don't know. There's something about the bats I am so in love with. So, and I already have two types that I've seen of hers. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need that one and that one, and maybe the pizza one. Probably not the pizza one. I, I think I can remember this as cute as he, I don't know. I'm like choosing all of my future hoarding. So um, I'm like, I think maybe if I order like one a, one a week, no, that's too much. Maybe one a month, one every other month. So it keeps my hoarding from getting too out of control, but I still have that to look forward to. Um, am I making things? I don't need you, Google Assistant. I don't use you. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me close that. That is, there we go. Uh, Sneak said, you know that plants look awesome with the colors you decorate with. I, I know. I love, like, especially when you get the lime greens up against the teal. I love these colors together. And I've got a bunch of bigger plants, and so I'm excited to show you. It'll be in tomorrow's video. I have some bigger plants, like some monsteras over here now. It used to just be orchids behind me and, or in the studio over here. Now I, I have so much that you guys haven't seen. So I definitely need to get some footage of that. It's And especially as they start to fill out, it's... Like the colors, those with teal, I will, I'm so in love with it. I like them. Um, Jason said, what's the bat's name? His name is Sketch, which makes sense because it looks like he has sketches inside his wings and then art and his name is Sketch. Um, hey, I understood your question for once. Are you proud of me? Where are we? Sarah makes art said, some people are weird. If I turn on a live stream and I don't like what the host is doing, I just, just like any other type of video, I just click out. Yep, because you're, yep, that is the normal reaction. But some people feel like their voice just needs to be heard. I need you to know that what you did isn't for me. One of my favorites are the people who tell me how I talk too fast. And I'm like, wait, so you're pointing out that my brain works faster than yours. Like, that's a negative. I just, that, my brain is working that fast. That's why I talk fast. So, it's, it, it, yeah. Um, where are we? Snowing and ice where Bella is. Oh, no. We're actually, may, we may be getting some. It's kind of weird. Um, and next two, was it, I think Sunday and Monday. Weird. We're not going to warm up, I don't think, until a week from Friday, I think, gets up to 50. So, yeah, I'm going to be one whiny artist. Um, and H. Chicky said, I love that you can find plant clippings online, weather permitting, but it's so cool and inexpensive. Well, it depends on the clippings. Like if you want a monster, you want to look at plant clippings, go do a search on Etsy for Monstera Alba. Albo, sorry, Albo. Monstera, M-O-N, 
S-T-E-R-A-A-L-B-O, Monstera Albo Cutting. They're not sheep. Um, there are some that cuttings are insane still. You said, I'm from Canada and it was negative 53 with a wind chill on Sunday morning. Oh my gosh, no. Nope. That is a nope. Um, let's see. Did you hear that we can get Holbein colored pencil in the U.S.? No. Yeah. Did you hear about the price? Holy, I almost just swore. My God, I'm not insane. I'm not buying that. Um, okay. I'm insane, but I'm still not buying that. It's... It's like, I can't believe how much that it even like retail. Oh, that is the wrong brush. Why did I just do that? Um, I am shocked at the asking price for those pencils because I don't, you know, the artists who I really trust their opinion. So I think they know what I'm going to like. They're not, I don't think they're going to be worth it. And I need to buy them because I need to do a review because it will make me money because of doing a review and I, you know, it'd be better. I just there I'm I'm mm, no if I get a good coupon I would do it and the funny thing is um that they say hold on oh I have to welcome Annabella welcome Annabella if you're watching um to Patreon um I have to say I I just lost my train of thought is what I have to say what are we talking about my brain just shut down I got all excited oh hold on if I get a good coupon I'll do it but just for the principle of you want what is it God, what was it? It was over 400, $350. No, 450. It was insane. It was insane. Like, I'm sorry. There is no way your pencil is worth that much. There is no color. I just, no. So, I mean, especially not when I, it's like I have my Derwent Lightfast. I have my Polychromos. I have these pencils that I know are awesome. I just, I know. And I have a feeling the prices will come way down. I think that they're kind of banking on the hype right now of, oh, look, it's here and people will pay up the butt for this, even though they probably shouldn't. So yeah, no, that is not happening yet. And I know I said that I would buy them when they were available here and all that, but I didn't realize the price was still going to stay outrageous. I figured the price being as bad as it was initially was due to the fact that they weren't supposed to even be sold here. And so you had, you know, for, for that, you weren't paying normal retail prices. There was a markup. No, they're just insanely priced. So I... I'm, I'm just, mm, not yet. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. If that price either comes down or if I get a good coupon and see right now only Blick carries them. And so being that they kind of have that monopoly right now, the price is not, I don't think it'll really drop too much until Jerry's and other people are allowed to carry them. We'll see. Uh, Sarah said, Lily Singh made a skit called support group for Karen's. It's pretty funny. I'll have to look at that. Uh, let's see. Hi, Karen C. Another nice Karen. And this is why we're no longer calling them Karens. This is an awesome Karen. Um, she is not a, can I see your manager? Let's see. Clive Bernard said, Blick has Derwent Light Pass on sale. $2 a pencil. I just ordered all the colors I didn't have. Full set syndrome is alive and well. I just heard from, I actually need to email them. I heard from Derwent today. They're, I've got to get some more. They're going to send me some more of my pencils I need, which is cool because I was about to order a bunch. So, because I was like, oh, I'm getting low on nightshade. So this is kind of cool because they'll, yay. Very convenient. They had good timing because I really almost just bought a bunch. Uh, Karen said, 157 watching, but only 69 thumbs up. Please do it for least. Oh, thank you. see, see, this is why I'm no longer using that term, Karens. Perfect example. She is not a, can I see your manager? She's awesome. Thank you, Karen. Yes, please thumbs up. Uh, Linda said, I think this is the cool, uh, coldest that it's been here in DFW area since I got married 33 years ago in January. We had an eight inches of snow, of ice for about 10 days. Fun wedding. Oh my gosh. We, I know we moved here in 2008. And we did have snow. There were a few times that the weather dropped really, really low like this. But it didn't last. Like, this seems to be lasting longer than what I remember that doing. I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see. Snow forecast for Ireland tomorrow and this weekend. There is talk of orange red alerts for Ulster and Northern Ireland. It's minus three Celsius here, right? Oh, nope. Nope, nope. Monica said, Ma says hi. Hi, tell her I said hi. Want to let her baby girl know she loves you and your work and makes a smile. Wanted, wanted to know if you have any tips of drawing realistic fire. My fire looks cartoonish. Contrast. Your dark, dark reds, almost blacks, up against like almost white yellow, like that high contrast. Well, get a good photo. That's going to be your first thing. Get a good photo. And I want to do another lesson. I want to do some more fire stuff. I need to get a good photo. But I, what was I? Oh, um, do I want to shade his eyes? Not with that dark. Um, I didn't get a light out yet. 
So getting that good photo, but pay attention to the contrast. That contrast is gonna make the biggest difference there. And then I like to do build it up as glazes. So I'll start with my lights and then glaze like the darker orange and then the reds and then, you know, burgundies, get some burgundies, some reddish black in there. So that should, that should help. Blues, don't forget your blues. Hi, Jared, Jared. Marty said the Star Jasmine will come back this cold, will it? That's kind of encouraging. Um, Heather said, blame the freezing temps on me coming into town for the day. <laughs> See, we are. Yeah, you brought, you know what I blame them on? So I had a pumpkin that I, I told my neighbor that I was blaming him on this, or I texted him earlier with that. Um, I had a pumpkin out in front of my yard and it just wasn't rotting. Like it, I just threw it away. It was there from like, you know, Halloween. I, but it was just the pumpkin. It wasn't carved. So, and I just, I have a thing for pumpkins. Like I keep pumpkins, like decorative glass ones are in my house all year round. So my neighbor was giving me crap for not taking down my decorations. And I'm like, that's, hmm, it's a pumpkin. He gets to stay up all year. Like he can stay up until he rots. So I finally was like, okay, my neighbors are judgy, getting judgy. If my neighbor that I'm friends with is getting judgy about my, my pumpkin, I better throw it out before somebody, you know, the HOA or somebody gets all puffy about it. And then this happens. So he had told me, he go, cause the, the way that started, he's, he's like, you know what season it is, right? And I'm like, it's still warm. Or I'm like, it's winter, but fall, pumpkins can be for winter. And he goes, we haven't even hit when he was giving me crap kind of about the temperature. We're going back and forth, just arguing about the pumpkin, like joke arguing. And I, I remember saying something about um, the temperatures. Oh, that's what it was. He was he, telling me it was winter. And so later in the conversation, I said something about winter. And he's like, this isn't winter because he's been in Texas longer than me. You know, this isn't winter. We're still in fall. And I'm like, oh, so my pumpkin is appropriate then is what you're saying. So he just rolled his eyes. walking. But it, it's kind of a funny thing. But that story makes no sense when I tell it. It was way, you had to be there. So anyway, um, I ended up throwing the pumpkin away. And so I told him today i texted him i'm like i blame you for this weather i'm pretty sure that pumpkin has been holding off the whole winter like it has been the most mild warm winter i throw the pumpkin away and then winter hits all at once and like here's all of winter in one or two weeks so his fault for making me get rid of the magical pumpkin that was keeping the cold away uh let's see lynn said i can see lisa singing at home welcome to the jungle i don't really walk around singing but it would be fitting and now that song is stuck in my head. So thank you for that. Serving Artist Collective said, it's a La Nina year, a global cool year. Summer here now, and it's wet. The temperatures are cooler than most of our winter. Be interesting to see your summer this year. Yeah, it will. Um, Cat's Art Pick said, I know how you feel, Lisa. I don't like the cold at all either. It's terrible. Monica said, Ma said she can't wait. This spring, I'm going to go to a full garden with vegetables. Hers, fruits, and flowers. Veggies, hers, fruits, and flowers. She gets to water and having all the babies do her bidding. She's cute. Oh, that's awesome. She needs cake while she does so. Uh, let's see. I used to have black tulips, hollyhocks, and pansies, among the other stuff. I really want hollyhocks. I'm tempted to plant some along the back wall. Um, hold on. My flamingo slipper is stuck in my airbrush hose, but I'm tempted to Oh my gosh, I'm all kinds of tangled up. I am tempted to plant some along the back wall. Like I'm weirdly obsessed with hollyhocks right now. I don't know where that came from, but I am also. Welcome, Ale Alexandria. Wow, your name is pretty. Thank you. Welcome to Patreon. Uh, let's see. Jason said, I have to keep comments short and simple. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't understand them. Look for once I understood. Um, where are we? Scrolling. Facebook user says I love sales. By the way, if you are a Facebook on Facebook watching, it, I, the restream app I use doesn't let me always see who's commenting. If you go to, crap, what was it? Um, hold on. It is chat.restream.io slash Facebook, or sorry, slash FB. If you go there, that will allow you to tell Facebook, hey, let people know when they're on restream who I am. I can't see names and it kind of sucks. Um, what color is the hat mushroom? It's an umbrella, mushroom umbrella, and it is lavender. Sneak said, oh, actually, that's not the technical color. It's the color I call it. Do I even have the tube of paint? I don't know where it is. I have no idea. I have it over here. Oh, here it is. It is brilliant purple mixed with magenta or deep violet. Who makes Caput Mortem color? That is Faber-Castell in the polychromos. Um, Sarah makes art said, do you always have your tripod set up and ready to go or do you store it in a corner and position it where you're ready to record some? So I have 
a bunch of tripods that are kept in a corner. I have one tripod, my fluid head one, the Manfro, is it a, no, who, who made you? Is it a, I don't know, paid way too much for it. Um, it's awesome though, the fluid head on that thing is amazing. That one stays out all the time just because it's big and heavy and I'm beating up my wall every time I put it away and it's just, it's awkward. So I just usually leave it up all the time. My smaller, lighter weight, well that one's up right now because I've been using it. Um, normally those get put away. And then this one, you guys have seen the, um, it's a, Boom mic stand. My gosh, brain shut down there. That stays up all the time. There's nowhere to put that. Um, getting caught up here. Just got here. Seem to be having a problem with the sound. It keeps going up and down. It's because of every time I turn my head, if I go over here or over here, it's going to, like when I'm facing the camera, it's probably going to go down. When I face this way, it's probably going to go up. My wireless is not. We're having some tech issues, so I'm having to use that instead. Um, Terry said, I'll send you a million pictures of the fire in my house. Do that. Get good. If you can get good photos. Um, where are we? Let's see. See, yeah. Hollyhocks receive themselves too. That kind of made me excited. So I'm not allowed to have anything within, okay, white. That's what I was working on. Paint, Lisa. Paint and talk. I'm not allowed to have anything within five feet of my back wall or like any of the walls or fences. The HOA does not allow it. But... You can put flowers and stuff like whatever if you have to replace that like if they have to do work on the fence or whatever that I, you're you can do whatever so i'm thinking if i did hollyhocks back there would be kind of neat because they just come back so that was what i was thinking um uh, petty picasso said you know where you are you're in la Cree's live stream baby <laughs> oh my gosh um let's see hi z now we're going to add some white highlighting you know, white highlighting as opposed to the black highlighting, or whatever. I'm not thinking properly. This is what happens when I do not nap. Okay, so kind of the same thing. I'm just gonna come in the centers and then smudge that out. I'm just looking at my previous zombie snail to get an idea of where I want things to be. Smudge that out. And a little highlight back here. And smudging. I got a bunch more of these brushes and they're kind of amazing. This is the Hamburg Premiere by Creative Mark. It's a filbert. It's kind of stiff. It's scratchy a little bit. I am loving these for blending lately. Does Gibson uh, take your placemat scrunchies and washcloths and keep them in his bed? If he can get to them, yes. I have to keep them picked up. And the problem with the scrunchies is that he eats them. He swallows them and then throws them up later. So he'll occasionally, like it's been a while since he found one. Um, we have to make sure that stays away from him. We don't want a blocked Gibson. But yeah, he'll take those if he can get to them. And I think his thing with like wash rags and hand towels is that they don't squeak. Like he wants to play with a toy. He freaking hates squeaky toy. He hates the squeak, which is the opposite of Wade. Wade thinks, Wade thinks the squeak is amazing. So, which works out well because Wade is also a toy hoarder, um, kind of like me and plants. So he doesn't like yesterday the new toy I got him I'll always give Gibson a chance first to play with it because he's pretty much gonna nuzzle it like shove it around and then he's done after 30 seconds once Wade sees it he's gonna grab it and take it and Gibson's not allowed to touch it again Gibson or Wade just like all the toys are his so um which works out well to have one that loves them so much and one that's like meh but I think that Gibson's thing with the hand towels is just hand towels and wash rags is that they don't make noise but it's something to carry around the problem is he starts to shred them so if he just carried them around, I'd be like, yeah, fine, whatever. But he shreds them and then he'll eat the pieces. So, um, hi, Angela. Nick said, is this the mixing white or zinc white? This is just my regular uh, titanium white. So opaque. Because I'm not trying to make like a, uh, it's not a glaze. I'm, I want it to be more like chalky white, if that makes sense. Priscilla said, I used polychromos and can send me tens for the first time, and I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but I was fighting the paper the whole time, as in it didn't want to take the layers. 
I don't usually put as many layers on the Cans of Me Tens. I feel like it, it, it grips initially so much pigment that it doesn't need as many layers. So I kind of know what you mean there. Um, that might be why more layers went down faster than what you're used to. So where normally it would take you five layers to get that level of coverage, it happened in like one. Just because of having more tooth on, on the paper, that seems to be what I've noticed. So I'm wondering if that's what it was. Jason said, you could go over my, uh, to my sister's house and get some lessons in Jason's thought process. Oh, wait, she has problems understanding me also. Never mind. Um, hi, Kathy from Hong Kong. Uh, Monica said, try not to make the fire blend with the red rose. The rose looks burnt, so I have the purple, yellow, reds, and blues. Can I still use those colors? It's a Valentine gift. I mean, I, I can't see it. Maybe post in our art group so we can see it and give you some advice. Um, like, I can't really vision what you're talking about. You should be able to, but I mean, I'd have to see it to know for sure. So I would say post in our art group over on Facebook or maybe links are in the description. Somebody will give you some advice. Velma said, have you heard of hollyhock dolls and will you make some? You can Google hollyhock dolls. I'm going to have to Google that. I've not heard of them. Okay, I'm back to some highlights in here. Just smudging the edges, not blending the inside, only the edges. So that's going to be a big tip for my airbrush. Uh, Bracer just went off. When you're blending, I am mixing some white in with my paint. And when you put that on there, you're blending the outer edge, not the inside. If you focus on the inside, you push the paint. If I, I, this is the area I want to blend. If I blend from the inside out, I push the paint around the outside edge and I get this harsh line there. That's the opposite of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a soft outer edge. Leave the inside alone, smudge your outer edges, and only a couple brush strokes, then you need to stop. Thanks, Joyce. That watercolor was a lot of fun. It's been fun reading everyone's tips too. I mean, I normally don't ask for tips because I know how to work in most, you know, the videos I make, I know how to work in those mediums. So it's been fun reading tips from everybody and all of the advice you guys have given me and like channels that you liked and all of that. It's been, it's been fun. Okay, let's see. Let's get some highlighting up here. Maybe a little here. And of course, I will go around with my aqua just because that's what I always do. Leisha said, my grandma had hollyhocks and taught me how to make hollyhock dolls that floated in her fountain. What? That sounds so cool. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I've never, I don't know if I've even seen them in person. Like, I've seen photos online, but I don't know. There's something about them that lately has just been fascinating me. Um, I think we are good there. So I need to do some little hearts on his, um, his umbrella. A bit more white there. Let's make that a bit more trans or more opaque. I don't care if these are the same size. I'm not even going to worry about that. Let's get some variation in there. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Fiddle Jewel. I'm starting to turn into Romper Room again. Just in everyone's names. I always feel funny when I do that. I think it's just kid flashbacks. I should get a magical mirror when I start that. Okay, let's see. I think I want some more highlights now, some just bright, bright lights on his shell here. Okay. 
and let's throw a little bit in here. A little bit more. Yeah, I keep trying to talk my mom or my parents into moving to Texas, which eh, maybe eventually, I don't know, probably not, but you know, a girl can hope. So I've been bugging them, them about that forever. She's right now texting me like screenshots of, cause she watches our weather all the time, not for moving here just cause I live here. So she watches that all the time. She's said, he was saying, oh my God, I can't believe like, the temperature things. Like how, she doesn't understand how anyone can live when it gets to three degrees. <laughs> it's been kind of funny. Good night, Elaine Creative Arts. 3 a.m. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we've got to get some rain and I also need to get the teal colors. So I'll probably do the teal first. Let's rinse these brushes out. Yeah, but one of the things that has amazed me most, I think, with the watercolor is how much more dependent it is on good brushes. Like I can use absolute crap with acrylics and, and I think that's why I never really cared. Like everyone links the rosemary brushes and or rosemary and co brushes and all of those. And I don't really worry too much about, or like, I don't know, these are fine and whatever. I'm not that big of a, a name brand person. Like it doesn't matter as long, you know, I can use pretty crappy brushes and they work just fine for acrylics. Yeah. Not so with watercolor. It's crazy to me. The difference there. I had no idea. Thanks cats art picks. Okay. I need my aqua color. Oh, thank God that's out here. Wait, no, it's not. That wasn't. Please don't be in my cabinet because my cabinet. So, uh, can you see the cabinet there? There's the cabinet I'm building. There's Wade. There is the dresser, the teal, excuse me, the teal one, and the rest of the cabinet in front of it. So, if I need anything out of there, we're just going to have to have to improvise. I can't talk. Improvise and use something else. So, hopefully, my teal is out here. Or my aqua there's a specific oh there it is yay okay that was a lot of stories i should have just kept looking for it because there we go thanks lynn okay oh coffee okay what brush do i want to line this with ew I didn't take care of that. That guy needs to be soaked. Do I have another liner? You should work. No, oh, you weren't taking care of either. I have been doing a crap job of taking care of my brushes. Angela said, cute snail. I'm loving the water pulling at the bottom. Thank you. It's going to be raining. So he's kind of going through the rain, which sounded cuter when it wasn't so cold outside because now I look at that and I'm like oh he's in cold water but like when I came up with the idea it had been like 70 degrees out so I'm thinking like a nice warm right yeah nope now my brain looks at it and goes oh that's too cold um let's see Darcy said you can get away with cheaper paint and watercolor but paper and brushes are really important that is so weird to me it's so opposite of what I'm used to I feel like your well, no canvases do make a big difference with acrylics and oils, but like the brushes just aren't like that's so weird. It's so backwards. Okay, let's see if this comes out opaque enough. If not, I will come back through and add some white to it. Looks like we are good. Now, I'm not trying to line everything. I'm just kind of getting edges on certain things. Um, the canvas that I'm working on, I did not mention. Every, everything I'm using should be linked in the video description. But this is a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. And just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. Actually, they're one of the people I need to contact because I'm running low on some stuff, which you'll laugh when you see the next week's video when I show you my canvas supply closet. Although it might look more empty when I get all of the paper into this. We'll see how that all works out. But anyway, um, yeah, no, this is a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. And did I already say this part? Just for transparency, I am sponsored by them, but they were already all I used. So that didn't make any difference for me other than I don't have to buy the canvas now. Uh, let's see.
There is zero rhyme or reason as to why I'm putting green where I am. It's not like, oh, here's the light source. It's based on, oh, I think that would look nice. That is it. That is my entire thought process on that. Uh, Starry Nerdist Collective said, pencil question. I have just bought some cheap, cheapy pencil extenders. Extenders, I can't talk, but they are not fitting my pencils at all. Lesson learned. Which ones do you use? I use the ones from Derwent. It comes in a two-pack. There's a silver one and a black one. The silver one, if I'm getting this right, fits my luminance, which are a little bit wider, and my the black one fits my polychromos. Um, I don't even remember which one fits the Derwent. I haven't had to use it in my Derwent Light Fast ones yet. Yeah, it is, huh, Alana? Like, it's, it's, the background is so light. I'm not having to mix white in with this. So it's like, it is popping out really nice on this. I'm, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. Yay. It makes up for all the, like, random crap I've been dealing with with tech stuff lately. Also, you know, that's surprising to me, too. I built this cabinet. I don't know... Maybe because I'm used to Ikea and Ikea instructions and Ikea quality is, I mean, you get what you pay for. I'm not, I shouldn't complain about it. Like the stuff I have from Ikea, like I feel is worth what I paid for it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, even the crap, my husband, my husband. So I have, I try to stick with stuff that is, is solid wood. My husband's more likely to go with, oh, it's close enough, even if it's like fake particle board, whatever crap. And then that stuff never holds up. But like even with Ikea, most of the stuff I get is solid wood. So usually, oh, oh, the drawers, the dressers are not, the they're not hanging on, but I put heavy stuff in them. So maybe that's, oh, my clothes, I have one for my clothes too. And I'm having problems with that one. Anyway, no one cares. Moving on. This one here, it's, where did I get it? I got it from Overstock, but I think it's from like wood grain or something like that. At wood, I found them on Facebook too. And the, it's solid wood and it, is it has gone together so smoothly like and it's it makes sense like it just the way that you put it together it's solid like i had to nail the backing on to the background and like i don't know just all the stuff in putting it together feels so much more solid than the ikea crap that i i put together so i've been really like with all the tech problems i've had i kind of expected this to be one of those like and here's one more thing that went wrong or this didn't line up like everything has gone so smooth in putting this together so it's been really nice um, Ikea Billy bookshelves simply do not bend. My hubby worked for Barnes and Nobles for 20 years and we have a lot of books. <laughs> nice. Uh, Darcy said, totally loved your chat the other day uh, regarding chat, uh, creating an experience when selling and the story behind the fairy lady and the baby bat lady. Yay, I'm glad. Yeah, it's so funny looking back at too, the fairy one. That is a memory that just always stuck to me um, or stuck to me. <laughs> That's not how you want to word things. Stuck with me. Um, believe it or not, that is just coffee. Wine hasn't even happened yet tonight. I'm copying right now what I keep looking at is my other zombie snail. I like where the aqua hit on him and I'm pretty much putting it in the same place. Um, Clark Ryder said, I have some polychromos, the 20 count set of luminance, and soon the full set of Derwent Light Fast. Given that there is any reason to look at the Derwent drawing pencils, given that, is there any reason to look at the Derwent drawing? Oh, absolutely. So the Derwent drawing, oh, I'm over here, they're back there. They're, it's a small set, it's 20 something pencils. There's not, not that many, they're all earth tones. They blend easier and better than any other pencil I have, like by far. If I need an out of focus background and I can possibly use those colors, I'm gonna use those colors as much as possible. So yeah, I do think that there is value in them. Limited colors, my gosh, I really hope they someday expand that, that line, but oh my gosh, you will get the smoothest blending with those, they're amazing. I used to literally have 2,000 books. It's funny, the, um, the, 
bookcase I'm building right now, one of the stages when it was on its face, you were supposed to put books under it because of the way the, the latchy things are. So you're supposed to put books. So I'm thinking, who has books laying around that they can damage under a bookshelf they're build, building? Like the only books I have, because I don't buy, but I buy books on um, Kindle or whatever, like on apps. I don't want to store them because I have plants that are everywhere where a book might go. So I was thinking, what an odd thing. The only books I have are signed by author books just because I like that book. I like the author and I wanted one signed and that's like, I'm not using that to build a shelf thing. So I ended up using, because I have so many smart art boxes. They were perfect, that box. I stuck it, I'm sure that'll show the video. I stuck it under instead of books. It just reminded me of that when you said you had 2000 books. I probably do too, but mine are all digital. So, you know, when zombie apocalypse hits, I'm not gonna have anything to read. Um. Clark Brainer said, thank you. I've been considering them for a while, but wasn't sure of the benefit. I love them. I don't, I don't use them that often because they are limited in color, but if I've got a natural background and I can use those colors, that is, or a portrait for skin. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. Angela said, you look like you've lost weight since the last I saw you. What are you doing? If I can ask, I just started keto. So I started losing weight in, um, I think it's the lighting that's making it more obvious, but I started losing weight in, when was that? June, the end of June. So I had a moment, you know how you always hit that moment where you're like, and this is the line. I, I hit, I hit the limit of what I'm willing to do. So brushing my teeth and my gut was sitting on the counter and I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, really? So I was like, that is my line. Like I cross, I hit the, I, I have to do something about this. That, that and my pants didn't fit anymore. And I didn't want to go buy new pants because mine were perfectly fine other than that they didn't fit. So that was my moment. It was in June. So I went on a low calorie diet, which is funny because I, I did, I tried counting calories like 10 years ago and did not have luck. Turns out, I think the app that I was using is not as accurate. Fitbit has been like crazy accurate on, on how active I am versus how much I'm burning. Like it balances it out. And I know the app I was using before didn't. So I think the app I was using before probably thought that I was a normal person level of active and could eat more calories in the day. Turns out when you were as lazy as me, you have very limited calories. So anyway, yeah, I did calorie counting. Um, I found out through all this too, and I had no idea. I thought with fibromyalgia, all carbs caused pain. I can have rice which is really exciting for me because I love rice so much. So rice I get to have, which is awesome because when I was doing the low carb thing, that obviously I couldn't do. But I thought that I couldn't have rice because it would cause problems with my joints. No, potatoes still do. I still have problems with potatoes, but I, I can, which is rice bowls are what I mostly live off of. But yeah, I just started counting calories and being aware of, like we, you don't realize how many calories, and especially when, when um, COVID hit, and I've gone through a few videos where I, like old footage, that I, I'm like, oh, can I use this? And it amazes me to see just in, you know, since June, the difference is crazy. But when COVID hit, a lot of the stuff, the keto stuff, everyone was buying everything out in the stores initially for the first few weeks, and I really got bad. We were just Ubering or Uber Eats or whatever, door dashing, um, fuzzies tacos. I was eating nachos. So just to give you an idea, Everyone just went to sleep. So Fuzzy's nachos, that alone, just for the nachos, is almost 1,300 calories. I was eating that twice a day. Now, my actual amount I should be eating a day is like 16, 1,700 is about what I burn. So unless I go, go walking, I might burn a bit more, but and it's actually not that much more. But I was eating in one meal what I should have in an entire day, and then through Coke. I was drinking Coke. I was like, oh... I'm bored, you know, celebrate, we, we, there's an excuse for everything. We're celebrating buying a house. I can have a Coke. It's COVID. I can have a Coke. Like, it was stupid. Like, I had an excuse for everything to keep drinking Coke. And I don't even like Coke. I like Pepsi. But whatever. I, that's what Fuzzy's Taco had. So I was drinking so much soda and um, eating a lot of, of nachos. So, yeah, I, I didn't, you don't realize how much you're consuming until you, like, start counting. You're like, holy crap. Wow, no wonder my pants didn't fit anymore. So yeah, I just started becoming aware of that and controlled controlled everything that way. And it came off really, like, I was surprised how easy it was. Um, but yeah, that is what I did. And it worked weirdly well. And I did 
I did the, the low carb. I never got to where I was strict enough that I got myself into ketosis and keto only works if you're in ketosis. I did low carb enough that whenever I stuck low carb, like really low carb, I wouldn't gain, but I wasn't losing. So then I'd cheat and I'd gain and then I'd go back to low carb and I would stay there for a while. And so that wasn't the, the calorie counting for me worked really well. And it's given me, like I said, I can have rice now and I couldn't before and I love that. Or um, making my own gluten-free sandwiches with gluten-free bread. I love sandwiches. So yeah, that, it's been weirdly like good. And it's funny because you, my other thing I didn't want to do, because I'm like, it's going to be so hard. Yeah. So it's also hard to not fit in your pants. Which hard do you want? The things don't fit and my gut is sitting on the counter when I brush my teeth or do I want the heart of controlling my eating habits or just being aware of my eating habits really was always. So yeah, it, it was much easier. I, I would say it's been much easier to be aware of what I ate versus not fitting into my pants. That, that was physically uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, thank you. You're right. He needs his little scars. I forgot that. Let's throw that in before I forget. That would have been just terribly sad. It goes right about here. There's that one. And then he's got one back here. Yeah, I don't drink soda at all anymore. Like, I don't even at all. I, li I drink bubbly water, like carbonated water. I'm so addicted to that stuff because I love bubbles. I want bubbles more than I want the sugar, so that works. But the nice thing is too, now that I've pretty much hit my goal, I can occasionally, like if I have, I call them my points. Um, like, it's like a budget. I look at it like a bank account, like this is how much I have to spend for the day. And sometimes I have extra and I can have a Reese's peanut butter cut, which is a, like also amazing because when I did, Keto, I felt, I feel like the limited calorie is more, a little bit, a lot more flexible than what I felt on keto. I felt more restricted. So for me anyway, and it's going to be different for everybody. So don't feel like this is the only way to do it. There are a million ways. You just have to pick one. And that's what worked for me. Have I tried curry on rice? I have n I don't think I have. So I don't get to try a lot of fun foods because of celiac disease. So we mostly were eating out and we're up, the only place, like I was so limited on where I could eat out. Um, so a lot of different types of food, I really haven't gotten to have my, like most of my adult life unless I make it on my own, which I'm very lazy, very lazy. Mostly my husband cooks. Um, I'm scrolling up because I apparently missed a bunch here okay yeah I'm down like 30 pounds so for, since June so it's worked well this has been the most success I've had and now everything fits again so I'm happy um yeah we as artists do a lot of sitting a lot and then I'm video editing like almost everything I do I'm not active this was the other thing I learned we like to think and I used to say this all the time I just need to start working out more I need to start walking again and I'll lose weight that walk might have burned 200 calories. That is not going to make up for me being 1500 calories over what I burned for the day. Like, and everyone does that. And I see this a lot where people are like, oh, I had a good workout at the gym. I'm going to start losing weight and I'm going to work out. All the and it's like, yeah, your workout just burned like 200 calories, maybe 300, depending on what you did. Like it wasn't enough to make up for the fact that you then went and had Taco Bell and soda and all of these other things or KFC and all of these. Like those are tasty, but those are supposed to be treats, not something we eat every day but we're eating them. I was, I was eating this crap. Well, not KFC, but I mean, I was eating bad stuff every day. That was the problem. I didn't, I don't have, um, I'm not good at balancing things or like moderating, uh, moderate, moderate, whatever. Um, I am just like, wow, I like fuzzies tacos. I'm going to eat them for every meal forever and go overboard on my, you, you know, so that I think was a big part of the problem too, but a lot of people do the whole, and you should work out, out, absolutely, and that does make a difference, but not as much as what people think, and so for me, that every time I'd start, like, I'm going to start walking four miles a, oh, a day, and that will make the difference for me. It's more your diet than it is the activity. I mean, you want both, ideally, balance them both, but diet has way, way more to do with it.
so I can still sit like throughout this. I have not been that active in the summer. Me and Gibson walk or when it's warmer, me and Gibson walk. But when it's cold, it's still, I've still lost weight, even not walking as long as I stay within my, my budget, my calorie budget. Christine said, I just deconstructed a whole bunch of vintage books to make a, a make journal packs. I never would have thought there was a, a mark market for destroyed books. I admit, admit it was hard to do at first. I would have had a hard time with that too. I bet it looked cool though. Um, Let's see, got that. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, it feels good. My back feels better too. That was a big one. I have ankylosing spondylitis. Carrying extra weight was one of the worst things you can do for your back if you with that problem. So I've always known, like, it's not just a matter of being vain. It's a, like, this is not healthy for me. That is the worst thing I can do is carrying that. And it was causing problems. And since I lost it, oh my gosh, my back has felt so much better. Like, I mean, it still has problems, but not from, not from that now. So that's, a, it was a big deal. Um, yeah, no fitting rooms are open. So that's a bit of a problem right now because I actually lost enough weight that what I had been wearing for the last several years, like I, I went back to what I was my healthiest weight. So I, I know what I can wear in, in old Navy. I've been safe so far on what I ordered online, but I just have to, like, I just order it online and return it if, if it doesn't fit. And that's worked out well for me, but like, I'm getting to the point where what fit has always, you know, my, my smallest size that fit at old Navy, I'm getting to where I'm like, okay, that's getting a little loose. So yeah, but I'm about that. I, I'm not, I'm not actively trying to lose weight. I still keep myself at a deficit. I'd probably like to go down maybe one, maybe two pounds, but I also don't want to get to the point where it's like, I don't want to be get gross skinny for like my what would be gross skinny on me. So I I'm like a little bit more, not too much. So I shouldn't need new pants. I should be okay with. Them. We'll see. Anyway, um, Priscilla said, "Are you going to do a shamrock for the eyes for St. Patrick's Day?" I don't know. We we were coming up with ideas for St. Patrick's Day. I think you guys said a red beard, like a red fake beard, which would be adorable. So yeah, we are definitely ha gonna have to do something St. Um, for St. Patrick's Day. Let me know any more ideas you guys have. Yeah, and clarifying, I'm with you on that. I can't do any artificial sweeteners or even like the stevia, which isn't artificial. It does... Uh, I don't know how true this is. One of the theories was it does something in your blood sugar because your body's like, oh, it's sweet. I need to drop my blood sugar because I have sugar coming in, but you don't give it sugar. And so your body's like, I don't know what to do right now and freaks out. That's the gist of what I've, I've researched. I don't know if that's true. All I know is like if I have CV or whatever, it will make my fibromyalgia symptoms go through the roof. The fatigue, I've been drinking it a lot, or I had been, there was a, a few years ago. I was drinking the by coconut waters and they have that in, or is it stevia or xylitol or one of those in there. I got all mixed up, but I was drinking a lot of those and I started having like, I was getting so, I thought it was from all the surgeries I had gone through that was like aggravating the fibromyalgia. And then it clicked. I don't remember why it made me think like, is it this? That's one thing I changed about the time I did the surgeries. I started drinking a lot of these by coconut waters. So, which sucked because I loved them, but um, no, that was it. And headaches and like, it was bad. I was so sick. And when I stopped, it took, I'm trying to think, was it like a week before? And I really felt better. And then I tried one again, instant, like headache, everything. Gum. I can't even do like uh, sugar-free gums or anything like that, which sucks because I used to love gum, but Trident was my favorite, but I can't do anything that has like xylitol or any anything it's so i cannot handle it um is it time for the self-portrait then it is nick um i was just thinking and i have so many ideas for what i want to include in the portrait so i need to do photos and the cool thing is cool bad depends on how you want to look at it one of the things that you don't really think about when you lose weight your wrinkles are like all on display in a way they were not previously because they're not filled with the fat as much. So, but that makes it more interesting in the art. So as a portrait artist, I'm like, yay, wrinkles to draw. You know, as a girl, I'm like, oh, boo. But for the art, the portrait, I'm like, this that's gonna make it even more interesting. Total randomness there. And Lynn says, you are what you eat. I am coffee. Um, 
Yeah, I have a weakness for sweets too. And what I get, there are these, I get them from Target. It's a little like, they call them veggie muffins or something like that. And it's the chocolate muffins are the ones that I've been eating. It's like 110 calories. I have one with like every meal as a little dessert. And it's just enough to like, there's my sweet tooth, but it's it's got mostly like, it's mostly vegetables. It doesn't taste like it. Uh, thanks, Ian. I need to start the rain on this. Angela said, I was about to say, the bonuses of losing weight for me is the reduction in mental fog. It's really helped me be a better painter. I don't crash. I still do because the fibromyalgia is still there. But yeah, you know, everyone's going to have their bonuses for sure. The food I was eating was messing with the fibromyalgia too. I mean, eating just junk fast food. So now I mostly eat these rice bowls. But my husband, he has recently decided he's going to start dieting. And so he's been cooking more. I don't cook. He likes cooking. So he's been making more um, food that way which has been really nice too. Um, scrolling, Susan said, zombie snail with gold coins sitting in a shamrock perhaps. Oh, that would be cute. I like that. Sneak said, zombie snail needs a pot of gold for St. Patty's Day. Yes, that is such a good idea. I like it. Clark Fine Art said, I can't do stevia either, so it also makes me ill. I have to stick with real sugar in moderation. Yeah, that's me too. I can do real sugar, but I have to, like, my coffee has creamer, but I have to measure it. I get one tablespoon is 35 calories. Like, everything is about calories to me now. But one, I can do one tablespoon, so it's just enough to be a little bit sweet, but not, like, over the top. Um, so, yeah, I can do a little, little, I'm better off with real sugar than I am fake. And I always, that's been a thing, really, since the fibromyalgia turned into an issue for me. Gold coins for the eyes. Oh, that might work too. Or would it be creepy? I mean, we don't want a creepy zombie, which is dumb because it's a zombie still. Uh, Serving Artists Collective said, have cut out sugar products, alcohol, cut out most meat and breakfast altogether since August have not allowed us an ounce. Have to fight with my GP. Yeah, it <sighs> It depends on how you do it. See, this is what my husband was having problems with. Um, all we have to do is write on this, so we're not behind. We are finishing this guy tonight, so I'm just getting caught up on the, the conversation. But my husband, he kept telling me, well, I'm counting calories, but I'm counting them in my head. I'm like, I know him. That's not going to work. He's not keeping track of them. But he kept door dashing. And so I started in June with the diet, and he started about the same time, but his he was still door dashing all this like fast food. So this is one of the things that I found. One of the things that I eat, Chips, oh my gosh, chips have so many calories. So um, we go to Chipotle and I like to get their bowls, like the burrito bowl. So when eating those, I used to get chips all the time with it. Well, right there, uh, it chips are, are more calories just for the chips than the bowl itself. So I backed off that. I don't add cheese to stuff anymore. Um, rarely do I have cheese. Like if I have a have pizza, that's I don't have to earn the points for that. But um, I had to make some adjustments on the things that I ate there. So, but the thing that I learned with Chipotle, so the, the bowl that I get is 550 calories. However, if I ate that, let's say three days a week, I'd stop losing weight, even though I was still well under my limit. Like I was still at a super de deficit. Well, here's what I think it is. Some people, when they are of the people who work at Chipotle, sometimes they give you a ton of extra and you don't like, it's hard to count the calories when sometimes it's a bigger bowl and sometimes others. So it's hard to know how many calories that really is. And so I think that was ha what was happening to me is that it wasn't super accurate. It was probably more than what they said it was. So Matt thinking, oh, when I look up online, it says it's going to be this many calories, but it was probably more. And he was eating two meals a day at least of stuff that he door dashed from different restaurants, like random restaurants, burgers and all this. And I'd walk in, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it smells amazing in here. And how are you eating that on your diet? Like there's no way you're actually at a calorie deficit eating that. Plus he's working from home now. So he's he's as, as um, inactive as me because he's sitting at his desk all day. So, or all night in his case. But I, I'm watching that going, I know that's not gonna work. Plus he was drinking so many monsters. Then he started drinking diet soda, stuff that he knows is not good for weight loss. So he finally, um, after realizing, and he kept weighing himself, his cut, I don't know if he cares if I tell this story, his cutoff was he got on the scale and the scale is like a smart scale so it syncs with your phone. It asked because it didn't think it was him because he gained weight. So it wanted to verify that it was him and not another family member. And he goes, there was my point. So mine was my gut sitting on the counter. Matt's point was the scale being pretty sure it was the wrong person because he gained instead of he gained like eight pounds or something. So it was kind of funny. 
But he, at that point, he did some more research. And so he's doing one where it's like intermittent fasting with counting calories. And then there's a drink that he's doing that's like, what is he putting in it? I don't even know. Is it like cayenne pepper and pineapple juice, honey? There's something else. I think he was doing that because his lungs, he has bronchitis, chronic bronchitis every winter. That's just bad. So um, until it warms up, this is, that is his life. So it was supposed to help with that. But he started doing, um, being more serious about that. Now he's actually losing weight. But he kind of had this, all the things he was doing weren't working. And I'm watching him going, that's not going to work. I didn't really say anything because I knew he's not going to listen. He needed to find out for his own that his idea was not, or his plan was not working for him. So it's kind of funny. But yeah, he was, I think when he was eating out or doing so much fast food that it was too, too all over the board on how many calories it really was versus what they tell you it was. So with me, I can do Chipotle once. I can do it twice because I'm not trying to act like lose now, but I can do it like twice a week and be safe. Um, but I still, I can't do chips. I have to like really, yeah, there, I had to make some serious adjustments. And then you think like, oh, once I lose it, like then I can have chips. No, I, I can't have chips. Like that, there is no time I burn it up that I can have those chips. I'd have to save up enough calories for a bit. Anyway, randomness that people are probably sick of the diet thing. Let's move on. Are the Fabriano hot press blocks the same as the single sheets? It should be. I've not done like a super side-by-side -side comparison. I don't really notice a difference one way or another, um, but it should be. That's not helpful for you. Bake with almond flour to lower carbs and raise protein. Yeah, but that, that would actually raise. See, that's one of the reasons I didn't want to do um, the diet thing initially or the counting calories. I had done it before and you start to cut things like guacamole is really good for you, but it's also very high in calorie. And so I would sacrifice the thing that was good to lower the calories. And so that was definitely one of the reasons that I was hesitant with the, diet, the calorie thing. Um, the good proteins I was definitely short on for a while. Now, now that I'm not at such a deficit, I can start having the avocado. I can start having some of those things again. Um, yeah, cheese and cheese. Lenny is so my OMG cheese. Cheese was my biggest, like, that is a weakness. That's why I liked keto because I could eat all the cheese I wanted. I mean, that's not really healthy. Let's not pretend but i pretended so yeah i really really like cheese i was just thinking about that earlier like i want cheese my my alternative now when i want like just a quick snack like that because i used to snack on cheese way too much pickles oh my gosh i'm obsessed with pickles dill pickles cool. the what is it clausen like there's only one brand that i really like that much i've turned into like snooty pickle person um Yeah, Matt pays attention, like you, you're saying, Anna, but Anna about um, fiber allows you to eat more carbs. Matt pays attention to that. I didn't because it was too much. Like I needed to keep it more simple. So I just went straight with like whatever, because um, he does like this much, you can subtract that from this, from that, from, I, I'm just like, I'm just sticking with simple calories. It worked. Uh, scrolling. And scrolling. Patty Picasso said, I'm watching the stream while he's working on a multi-pack cheese and onion crisp in a bottle of Miller. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. Well, I'll be having wine later, so I get to have that. Um, I had to give, in the initial diet, I didn't drink much wine anymore. I used to have wine every night, and I stopped because I was like, I'm not wasting my calories on wine. I want food. I'm starving. And I thought I was starving. Like, it took my body a while to realize, like, you do not need. But the amount, too, that's the other thing in Texas is terrible. Our servings, like if you go to a restaurant, the serving size is insane. And my brain says, that's how much I should eat. I can, I can down that. No problem. That's how much I should eat. My pants were like, no, 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 you should not. So, um, having to kind of readjust the size of my meals was a bit, and it's still to this day, my brain says like, what is I, I think I should be able to have more than what is appropriate. So yeah, that's been kind of a funny thing for me to, um, to get used to, but I did give up wine for the most part, unless like I was hanging out with friends or something, then I'd go ahead and have some. But for the most part, I gave it up for many, many months because I, I'm like, I want, I want the food. Screw the wine, I want food. Um, let's see. 
let's see. Oh, wow, Sophia said, oh, wow, I just came over this in my recommended. Don't regret clicking on it. Welcome. Thank you. Yay. Olives have virtually no carbs, so I snack on them and said, oh, olives. My gosh. Yeah, that's another. Olives at pepper cheese is one of my, one of my other snacks, too, because I apparently like to burn my face off. Those are like a huge weakness, and those have very lows, too. So that's my other snack if I want something spicy, which I need to get more of. I really want those now. That sounds good. Uh, let's see. Have you had... And air fried pickles. I have not. That kind of weirds me out. But then every single thing. So my husband wanted an air fryer really bad. And I didn't really want like, I don't want one more thing in the kitchen to have to store. Actually, I have more cupboard space at this house than I possibly could need. But I was like, I don't want one. Like he always wants a device. Like he wanted a juicer at one point and then never used it. He used it once. Um, so this is, he does this crap to me all the time. And I'm like, you're not going to use it. And then I have to, you know, deal with it being stored. Because I can't bring myself to throw things away, apparently. So anyway, he's like, no, I'll use it. No, you're not. I know you. We've been married for 20 years. I know you're not going to use that. He did. He uses that air fryer on everything. And I don't think there's any been anything he hasn't done with the air fryer that wasn't amazing. Like broccoli. I didn't think broccoli was going to go well on that. It was amazing. It was so much better. So good. So yeah, I, um, I'm a huge fan of that. But cooked pickles kind of weirds me out. Angela said, in Texas, you got Papa Joe's big food. Yeah, I went there once, and it was, you were right. It is big food. Everything, like um, saltgrass was my favorite. That's where we used to go. Like, once a week, we'd go out to dinner to saltgrass. Dude, it was a business thing. Like, we'd talk about art, ideas for videos, all that, while eating way too much food. So we'd get the meal, and also sometimes the side, and then usually we just got tea. I got wine. He got tea. So that was our norm. And we did that once a week. And it's like, when you look back at like the amount of calories, the amount of food, and then the amount of calories. And I always didn't feel good after, which is probably a sign of you're eating too much. And I think that was the problem. I was eating too much. My body's like, I don't need this. I'm going to make you feel ill. Um, scrolling. What is my favorite dish? Hmm. I'm a huge fan of pizza, so I'm going to make where the rain is splashing. Actually, I'm going to switch to a liner brush where that rain is splashing off his shell. Um, huge fan of pizza. And luckily, I I always liked deep dish pizza, but having celiac, now I have to go, they have gluten-free thin crust, but I get it from, um, what is it? My brain just shut down. Where's the place that we go sometimes? Um, BJ's. BJ's has a gluten-free pizza that is amazing. It's one of the best. So we go there. Yeah every other week or so, sometimes once a week. Um, and that, that pizza, I think it's like 720, I forget what it is. It's not that many calories. The problem is it also doesn't fill me. I'm always hungry after because it's kind of small. But um, I'd say pizza's probably my favorite. And tacos, huge fan, like tacos. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. My favorite used to be bean and cheese burritos. There was, I don't know if you guys remember the green burrito. They had a bean and cheese burrito and it was like so much cheese. And that used to be, this is before I knew I had celiac disease. Oh my God, that was my favorite. That, and then in California, there was a, a restaurant. I don't know if it's still there. It was called Los Cerritos. It was like super authentic Mexican food. And it, they, oh, it was so amazing. What, it was so good. But their bean burritos, bean and cheese burritos. So that used to be my thing, like bean and cheese burritos. If I could have those again, but there's no like gluten-free bean, like flour bur tortilla that there are some, but I always get sick when I eat them. So I don't get those anymore. But yeah, those, those used to be my favorites, but I can't have them anymore. So probably I would say pizza and tacos are my two favorites. Thanks, Bizad. Thanks, Bizad. Bizad. I apologize for butchering your name. Watermelon pickles, but they're sweet. What is a watermelon pickle? That sounds terrifying. I'm scared. Um, yeah, Angela says, everything is big in Texas, including my rear when I tried to get into those pants after living here for too long. Yes, everything was big. Um, so too much information. Sorry, Artist Collective said, U.S. meal size. A friend visiting the U.S. tells me she has to order children's meals everywhere she goes. She finds adults serve... Uh, serves way too much. I've seen videos. It looks like a lot. Yeah, and it, it, I think that's the thing that's so weird is we get set in our head that that's the normal amount that we should be eating. What's really weird is that I was eating the same portion size as my husband. My husband weighs 100 pounds more than me. That doesn't make, like, 
that's not a good idea. We don't need, we don't have the same food requirements or, you know, calorie requirements. So that was, that's definitely something that is a bit of it, you know, definitely a problem here. And I think everyone gets to the point where we just accept, like, and we were just talking about that the other day, my husband and I, it's like, my brain still tells me I'm supposed to get, I'm supposed to be eating more than I am. And I'm not hungry. I'm like, I'm, it's a mental thing. It's not a physical thing. My, like my stomach's not growling. If my stomach growls, I go eat. Uh, but that rarely happens. Like it's not a, hum a real hunger thing. It's in my brain says I'm supposed to be eating these huge amounts. And that is not the case. But yeah, eating out. The other thing that's really weird too is just in general how much we eat out. Like that, that it, for me and my husband, we were eating out almost every meal. Like that was just our norm. And that's not good for you. Thanks, Angela. What is my favorite animal or thing to paint, if you ask? Um, flamingos are definitely one of my favorites. Flamingos, I love painting tigers, any big cats, really. Um, octo octopuses. Yes, that is how you say it. I still want to say octopi, but that is not correct. Um, I love painting those guys. Any underwater, underwater scenes, anything underwater, I would say is my favorite favorite. And then we'll back up to, what was it? Flamingos, definitely. And what else? I'm looking around my room. What do I have in here? I got a weird stuff. I like paint. I like combining things too. So something like, what I've got my, oh, you guys can't really see it. The zebra with the bees and the beehive. I like stuff like that. I really like painting. Anything weird. Favorite color? Teal. Oh, I like mushrooms too. That is, yes, I love mushrooms. Right there with you, Lynn. Um, what are tacos? I see you are not in the US. They are a Mexican, well, actually, I don't know if they originated in Mexico. I mean, that's something you typically find in Mexican food. I've not done the historical research on that. So I may sound stupid in saying that, but um, it's, uh, in my case, I use the to get corn tortillas, although you can get it in different types, but it's a corn tortilla and it's filled with like meat or whatever you want to fill it with. It doesn't have to be meat. Like I was getting veggie tacos from um, Fuzzies that were amazing, but usually it's a meat, cheese, like lettuce, salsa, something like that. That's usually what it's filled with. And it's kind of folded up like this. There's your taco and you eat it from the side. And it's really good, like really good. Um, let's see. And I'm just scrolling. Zodiac sign is Aries. I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. Yeah, cats aren't pigs. Tacos are delicious. I make them once a week. They're my, yeah, they're so good. Corn tortillas. Yeah, that's what I can do, but corn tortillas are always smaller. They're not going to really work in a burrito. They're smaller and typically thicker than a flour tortilla. It holds together better and it, it's thinner and it just works better for the bean burritos. I mean, I can do it with with a corn tortilla and I have. It's just not quite the same. How much did your paint last in minutes or hours? I don't even know how to answer that. I'm sorry. Um, where are we? Curry cheese chips, french fries, curry sauce, and then grated cheese. Live on it when I was in college. Delicious. Wow. That sounds tasty. What is my favorite thing to paint? Okay, got that one. I think this is duplicating questions. Enjoyed your watercolor video. Your ability to layer and detail with watercolor paints was amazing. Thank you. Watercolor pickles are made from the white part of the rind. Weird. What does that taste like? That is weird. Um. <laughs> Joanna, do I have to belong to yoga to have yoga pants? That's the other thing here in Texas. I don't know if it's that way where you guys are, but like everyone live, which is weird. I don't. I don't. To me, leggings go under the dress or under something else. Like I, my brain is just not, we wear leggings. I have jeggings. I can wear those on their own, but I can't bring myself like to do it. But here, almost all anyone wears are leggings. I don't know if that's just a Texas thing or what, but I'm still one of the people who are all, who insist that leggings aren't pants. I know no one else agrees with me. I'm on the outside on that one. I get it. Um, Still trying to scroll, get caught up on some questions, or we'll have to look and see if there's anything else I want to do to this. Maybe a little bit. Bye, Sophia. Thanks for joining. I can't start fix. All this talk about food is making me hungry. Yeah, me too. Um, let's see. And I did one of the, little, the goldfish and water lilies with Crayola crayons. It looked realistic. It was interesting. Nice. Um. 
Okay, I think I'm caught up. Angela said, will the snail be getting an, an eye? Do snails even have eyes? I count these as his eyes, but I don't think that's actually what an eye is on a snail. But in my screwed up way of what I think a snail has as eyes, that's what they are. Um, they do, so I have mystery snail. I actually have snails. I have mystery snails and I have some um, snails in my, my saltwater tank. But they do have like extra little things. I don't know which part is the eye, but in my world, those are snail eyes. I do not like to cook at all. Like, I love leftovers. To me, leftovers are the best food in the world because you just like take it out, stick it in the microwave, done. Um, okay, let's see. What else can we add to this guy? What should we add? Oh, we could add a little bit more. Let me get another brush to, let's see what I've got. I need a filbert. I need a smaller filbert. So I just got some brushes. They're in a box behind me. I'll do that as like an unboxing type thing. But in a couple of weeks, video I'm going to be doing for you guys. Um, rake brushes. I found some on Amazon. They look like I, one of them had been opened, but we're going to pretend for the video that it's com coming out. They were not in the same box, but the video is going to show it was in the same box. You guys know now because I've told you that part's going to be a lie. I'm already planning the lie. But if I tell you that I'm doing it, is it really a lot? Anyway, let's move on. So um, rake brushes, I'm gonna do a demonstration, talk a little bit about that. I'm kind of excited because I actually really like rake brushes. We'll talk about pros, the cons, when to use them, when not to use them. That is coming. Um, <laughs> Joanna said, I was a pro chef for 14 years. Food needs me. <laughs> That's awesome. My sister likes to cook. It's funny and because I am just not, oh, wait, who are you? What do I have you out for? I don't know if you were used with acrylics. You were used for something else. There's like something, maybe I never used it. Just rinse you off, you're getting used. I think you will work. Let's get a little bit of, there we go. Yes, I do like that. Just a hint on the, a little bit of water on there so it's kind of translucent. Tamara said, are you still finding time to play the violin? Nope. I really like listening to it on your older videos. I need to. It's on my definite, like, I absolutely need to start practicing again. I am so out of practice. And the problem is, and it's kind of a life lesson in general, and this is a good example of it. When you're serious enough about it, you're going to start now. And I don't think I've hit that point, kind of like the whole diet thing. I had to hit that point where I was serious. Like I am done with this. I am going to take care of this problem. And the violin is one of those that I'm like, this is the next thing that I need to get serious about and start practicing. Cause it's going to sound like absolute poop for like a month of me doing scales just to get back into it. That's not fun. No one wants to do that. And so then I don't, but I need to start because right now I'm so out of practice cause I haven't played in so long. But I'm definitely, it's on my to-do list of get your act together, Lisa. Let's start doing that again. So yeah, that will come. I just haven't done it yet. There we go. I don't really have much else I can think of that I want to add to him. I'm pretty happy with where he's at. I think he's done. We're just going to chat for the next 15 minutes or so because, um, oh, sign it. So tip, I should have signed a lot, but in case you haven't been here, let's see. Well, if I can find my white charcoal pencil, ha, we're in luck. So a tip, when you sign your artwork, if you've tried to sign your artwork with a brush and it just doesn't look like your signature and that's something you struggle with, get yourself a white charcoal pencil, figure out what you want to sign. And what I do, let me move this on. I hold the pencil, actually, hold on. I have to move this because this is not where I'm going to sign it. I hold the pencil, figuring out where is it going to look best for me to sign it. Here or here? Where is that on the balance of things? Either one works. It's not a big difference on this one. We're going to go with this corner. So use your white charcoal pencil. When you sign your name, make sure that you leave yourself enough room. You don't want to be signing it down along the very bottom edge because when you frame that, that gets covered. Sign it up a bit but you can write it out with your white charcoal pencil so it makes it very easy to see. Now, it will matter what paints you're using. This is Liquitex Basics, and one of the reasons that I use them is it is a very flat paint, which I prefer for my initial painting. I make it glossy at the end so it'll look like wet paint again, but that's with a, a varnish. Right now, 
when I'm drawing it, I like the flat because then I can draw things on. Let's say I wanted a random fish. I could draw it on with this and it'll show up real well and that erase as well. Then you take your liner brush and whatever color you want to sign that with, we'll go with a teal. You just now go right over, oops, that's too much water, what you wrote out comfortably. So that makes your signature look like your signature instead of a smudge you made because you can't get the paintbrush to write like your signature. I just trace right over that. This would probably be easier with a little bit of white mixed in with it so it would be opaque enough to show, but whatever. Now the color that you use, for me, I like to go with something, what, another color that's in the painting somewhere so it doesn't like draw too much attention to the signature. I want the signature noticeable, but I don't want it like noticed. I don't want it to be that's the thing you zoom in on. It needs to be there. It just doesn't need to be the center of attention. There we go. And then when this dries, I'm gonna let it dry till tomorrow. I can go through with a, what, a regular eraser and erase those marks, the pencil marks that are showing through. So let's back that up so you can see the whole thing. There we go. Thanks, David. Patty said we were meant to get a cover. Oh, you guys are talking about weather again. You can sign it on either side, Joanna, whatever works for you. It really isn't, it's not that big of a deal. Your signature will add weight. So when I think of my paintings, I think of them as like a weight balancing. So this, this is very heavy. This is not, this is kind of smaller. So in size, this is not very heavy. However, this, it has that magenta that stands out and that adds weight. So your color can add weight. The size can add weight. The contrast can add weight. One thing having more detail than another can have, add or take away the weight. Like several things to me add or take away from the weight of a piece. And so I try to balance it out. Like if I were to hang this in the middle, does something weigh it down one area or another? Like blank space adds weight. So I'm trying to figure out like weight wise where it would go. And then I consider, I factor that into the signature, um, which side might need to be pulled one way or another to balance it, if that makes sense. Um, let me go ahead and scroll up. Sarah said, I have a problem with, with cake. I just love it too much. That's why I have these little muffins have been amazing for me because it's like just enough, just enough for the, the chocolate ones, especially. I think I like the blueberry ones better. They're sweeter, but the blueberry ones, I could have five of them. And sometimes I have in the summer, I burned enough calories. Like when I'd walk that I could have some extras. I would sit there one on a night and have like five in a row of these. They're not, they're really little, but I would have that as like my evening meal and priorities. I would never, you can, I can never have enough. Whereas the chocolate, you eat like two and I'm like, yeah, I really don't want more of this. Like it's, it's more rich. So yeah. Um, Joanna said, oh, Lisa better shop, uh, shop up big freeze weather coming our way, like zero temperature and maybe snow. Yeah, I am not, not happy. We were, I was talking about that earlier. I brought in the plants that were potted. Almost everything in the front yard has been brought in. Most, everything off my patio has been brought in. I have a few things, that, well, that'll be questionable if it survives, but for the most part, yeah, I'm, I'm not enjoying this. Not a fan. Um... I was just scrolling. Tamara said, cutest zombie ever. Thank you. Yeah, um, I like the Starving Artist Collector said, talking about the food portions here, said her friend was a bit shocked at the size of the servings, plus how often people went back from work. She showed me photos. It is, and it, the thing that drives me crazy, like I don't judge some, like you're whatever, Whatever works for you, works for you. It's not that I'm judging in that. It was just weird because I have people that will tell me, like friends or from all family, that are like, I just can't lose weight. And, but it's like, I've watched you. I've watched, I, 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 I don't want to be mean. It's just, you can't say you can't when I've, I've seen what you, like, I hear people say that it's genetics. And yes, genetics absolutely play, play a role, obviously, to an extent not 200 extra pounds to an extent. So where people are like, oh, my, my mom, I, so growing up, I lived for a few months with my best friend and her family and her mom was, was obese. 
And so I ate what they ate. I gained 20, 30 pounds and I was a teenager, so I should have been burning that off. I gained like 20 or 30 pounds just in the three months of living there. Just, and I wasn't eating more. I was eating what they ate. And so you have a lot of people who will be like, well, it's genetic. My mom was always, well, your mom taught you how to eat. Your mom taught you what to cook or, you know, how to cook and the way that she cooked. And it, it's kind of funny because it's like we, when you, when you realize like now that I've cut back and like paying attention to the calories, realizing how much you're supposed to eat versus how much a restaurant or what you see on TV says you should have as a meal size, as a portion size, it is not the same thing. Like it's very, um, very, oh, I'm trying to think of how to word that. It's not deceiving, but I guess kind of. I mean, and even me, I still have a hard time sometimes wrapping my brain around, like this is how much food I need in one meal. I don't need this huge plate, but we've been convinced because you go to these restaurants and we're we also eating at these restaurants every day when we probably should be cooking at home more. Like we don't need to eat it out every day. That's a bit a bit a hard one for me just because I don't cook. So learning, um, learn, there were some definite hard truths I had to learn for myself because we have this in our head of like, and even with the, the calorie counting, my husband, I can so it's kind of funny, me being dramatic story. So when I came out that the day where I hit my limit of my gut is sitting on the counter when I brush my teeth. So that was the moment I come out, my husband's sitting at his desk and I'm like, I'm, oh my gosh, I have to do something about this. I can't do it anymore. I'm just gonna have to stop eating. Maybe if I fast like three days a week, I'll lose weight. And he looks at me like, obviously you're, and I wasn't gonna do that. That's not healthy. But I was, he was like, that's stupid. Why don't you just count calories? Like just reduce the amount of calories you're eating if that, if that see if that'll work for you. And I'm like, that won't work. I tried it before it won't work. I didn't try it right. <laughs> I wasn't like, it wasn't accurate how I was counting them before. So anyway, we have it. I know at least for me, and I've seen this a lot with family and friends where it's like, it, it won't work. I can't lose weight. And it's like, mm, you can, but we have to get over our idea, this preconceived thing. Like our society here in the US, here in Texas is like, here, you eat this huge, it's insane what we're consuming, like the calories that we are consuming versus the calories we actually need, like are so on opposite sides of the spectrum. Like it's kind of, and I don't want to sound like a luxury on whatever. It's just, these are things that I learned in the last, you know, six months or seven months, whatever, that kind of surprised me. So I'm sharing with you guys because it, it was just a big wake up call for sure. Like what, what is served to you versus what you need and that and chips. I still can't get over like chips from Chipotle. It, what is it? I want to say it's like 750 calories. I forget what it is. Like that's the, that's more than the meal itself. That is insane. And I would eat that and the meal. And it's so, yeah, these are just things I had to, I, I get, I'm not an active person, so that's a big part of it. But yeah, I definitely had to wake up to that. Um, let's see. Richard said, I Googled baby snails out of curiosity. Now I think zombie snail needs a son or daughter in your next one. That would be cute. Maybe like a Mother's Day, Mother's Day and Father's Day. Maybe that's what we can do. That would be adorable. Angela said, you know who doesn't serve huge meals? Surprise, Italy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's noticeable. I mean, you look at, at the most unhealthy, like America is horribly unhealthy. We know that. Like anyone who's getting offended by this, don't act like you don't know this. Um, America is horrible. The UK is really bad. Um, like it is, it's, it, it's obvious like what the cause is, but the problem, one of the things that I see is a problem that a lot of people, I, this is just human nature in general, wanting to make excuses on why we don't need to make changes is that we, like me, I was like, the calorie counting is not gonna work. It does, you just need to do it right. <laughs> like it's, we, we, or my other one is that it's too expensive to lose weight. It's too expensive to eat healthy. No, it's not. Because when you factor in, you're no longer buying soda, you're no longer buying chips, you're no longer buying the snack foods that are filler calories. We fill ourselves on so much filler calories, that's money that can go into the other food. So when you balance in, yeah, I mean, when you go into the organic and some of this stuff, it does get more expensive, but there is a way to do healthy. And she, I have saved so much money from stopping, you know, backing off the fast food. We go every once in a while if I have enough calories saved. Uh, well, Chipotle, we still do. I have saved so much money this last year by knocking that crap off, by removing these excess filler things that I didn't need anymore. So, you know, that's an excuse that a lot, myself included, I've made that excuse. So I'm not like judging anyone, trust me. 
I know those excuses because I made them. But it's like, yeah, that really wasn't a thing because when I actually, like when you save the money on all the snack foods, yeah, the snack foods are cheap, but those are empty calories. You don't need, you would be better off not eating than to eat those. So instead, take that money, put it towards the healthier stuff. So, and there is a way to eat healthy that is not that expensive. So it, fast food is so expensive too. Sarah said, my cousin can eat around 50 pizza slices and I can't to this day understand how. How? Yeah, see, you do have some genetics involved for sure. There are some out there who can, I am not one of those who can get away with eating like that at all. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Angela said, when you're shoveling food in day in and day out, that was me. I was eating myself at a house and home. It was all me. Yeah, me too. Was right there with you. Um... Stress eating. Oh, that was a big one. When COVID hit, I was using that as an excuse. I think I mentioned that early. Like, oh, it's COVID. I can have soda. I, I just, I just need some soda. That is a was a huge vice for me. Like, I've never. I can go without wine. I can go without alcohol. That's not a problem. Soda was my like. That is my vice. That is, and I would call my Pepsi hangovers because it didn't make me feel well. I would wake up so sick from having had so much caffeine and so much sugar. Like, I really, yeah. Um, it, it, it was. Yeah, I did it to myself. Ah, uh, freaking Nick says he's one of those intolerable people who can eat whatever they want, never gain weight. Leave it to Nick. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, portions really, that's a big thing. Well, portions too, and it's like the amount of dairy that we eat is way too much. Like we have, I, it's weird, like what, we don't, we can get what we would use in dairy from other sources, like because I know people are like, oh, but dairy is good for this. Yeah, everything has something good in it. That's just, there are better places to get it. Like, and for me, because that was my thing, cheese was my thing. The amount that I was eating was kind of insane. And that it's condensed calories. So, I mean, you think of it, milk is made to make a little tiny baby cow get really, really big in a really short period of time. Yet we're condensing it into smaller form, which means more calories and small thing. And we're, in, me, in my case, anyway, I was inhaling. I would just walk by, have some more cheese, Swiss cheese and cheddar cheese. Those are my, like, my two um favorites and i would just inhale because apparently and swiss cheese smells like feet so i don't know why i would want to eat that but whatever i was addicted and the amount that i was eating was just like oh my gosh uh let's see scrolling sarah said i had to limit the amount of candies i eat because it was making my face look awful and then at the end of the day my diet makes a difference yeah that'll affect your skin for sure um stop licking wade i'm just scrolling lemon chips what are lemon oh is that someone's name i thought that was someone said there were lemon chips i've never heard of that Arm scrolling. Gibson's up and getting comfy. Yeah, Joanna, put cheese. I love cheese. Right? Yeah, me too. I now the only time I really have it, although I was my husband and I were just talking about this. I'm gonna have a, I need to save up like enough calories, like enough points, enough extra. Do a deficit enough, and not big deficits, but do a deficit enough that I can do. I want to do. Um, in and out, I can do a double double protein style and a fry animal style. And that fry has more calories than the double double. Like that cheese, but I'm having it. But that, and then when I have pizza at BJ's, those are really the only time that I'm eating it now because I can't have it at home. I can't control myself. Like if it's there, I am eating it all. Like that, my mother in law, years ago, I lived with my in laws. She would get me these big, like huge Costco blocks, like huge freaking blocks of cheddar cheese. I'd be through that within a few days. I mean, the amount, um, luckily it didn't cause other problems for me, but the amount that I ate of that was like, oh, so good. Um, <laughs> Nick said he thought lemon chips was a food item as well. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh, that is crazy, Anna. Whoa. I am sorry you had to go through that. Okay. Does anyone want to come say goodnight? I get to go work some more. I get to go have break open the wine. 
get this uh, armoire, armoire wardrobe. So there's different names. I didn't realize there were so many different names for what is essentially the same thing. Armoire, armoire. I don't know how to say things. Um, wardrobe, I think is what this was listed at. And gentleman's chest. That was an interesting one. Look up gentleman's chest. I haven't figured out exactly. I think maybe there's more drawers. I don't even really figure out what the difference was. They were all kind of similar concepts. Apparently they're different. But yeah, that one. And the great thing about this, you can't see it here. Hold on. Let me turn it so you can see. This big box in the middle, it's supposed to have the bar, which I'm not including, where you would hang clothes. So it actually has that included in that one. I'm not being that in there. It's tall enough. My big sheets of paper can like all be safe and not on the floor anymore and not get dust bunnies behind them every once in a while, move stuff. And I'm like, whoa, missed that when I dusted. So yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. But yeah, this one wasn't called the gentleman's chest. There were a few of them when we went to Nebraska furniture were marked as that. I don't know if that's like the new trend. Like we used to say living room, but now people say great room and it's the same thing. So I don't know if that was, was the deal, but I don't know. That was a name we saw a lot there. Sarah said, I love rice, can't go without it. We eat it almost daily here in Brazil. Rice has been, I'm so glad that it's not causing problems for my arthritis or my, my fibromyalgia because that's been my thing lately. Um, white rice, which I know isn't as healthy, but that. And then um, last night my husband got me some wild rice. I made my own bowl with, he had made some chicken. It was so good. I'm like super, like rice has been my, one of my favorite things lately. Love it. Not, weirdly enough, I'm not a big fan of pasta, macaroni and cheese but just because of the cheese, but like spaghetti, eh, it's okay. I mean, I would eat it, but I'm not wasting calories on that um, at this point. I'm so protective over like, no, my calories are not getting spent there. But it's a weird, like I went from being obsessed with cheese to being obsessed with numbers of calories, but I'm getting, um, um, yeah, the, I never really like pasta itself. Not, I don't dislike it. It's just not like, I never was super obsessed with it rice though oh my gosh i love rice anyway thank you guys for joining make sure to check out nick and joseph and thank them their channels they get all of the spammy stuff out of the the chat so none of us have to deal with that uh their channels are listed in the video description i missed joseph's live stream yesterday no not yesterday the day before because i had a friend here from well she's from alaska and she stopped from you guys may have seen her bombshell creations um she's one of the artists at aquashella like one of the main the main person who does all the stuff for them and she was here visiting so we went to fuzzy tacos and had nachos yesterday as i say all this i saved up the plates for it so i did not go over i was good but we went to i didn't i didn't get wine last night because of it but um Anyway, so I missed out. I missed out on Joseph's live stream, and I really feel guilty. And I get to, well, not guilty. I get to go back and watch it now. Um, anyway, check out their channels. Links are in the video description. Thank you guys so much for being here with me tonight and hanging out while we finished our zombie snail. I hope if you painted him, please tag me in it. I would love to see it. If you're on Instagram or Facebook, me we tag me. In it. I would love to see. And I think that's it. And hopefully everything goes well. Friday at 1 p.m. Central Time, we will be drawing our little finches, the Lady Goldians, so super colorful finches, in colored pencil. Fingers crossed, last week didn't work out as planned. Still good live stream. You know, it's so fun talking about the marketing stuff. But anyway, I will see you guys Friday. And hopefully, well, we'll be, we'll, we'll talk less about calories. Um, see you then. Bye. I, I lost my button. Where is it?